According to Yannick Kesselman, deputy head of the Estonian Defence Forces Intelligence Centre, October will be a month with one of the highest levels of military casualties for Russia in its war against Ukraine. This development highlights both the intensity of current Russian offensive operations and their continued reliance on high casualty tactics. Combined with reports on North Korean troops' movements, it is possible there is a critical manpower shortage in the Russian military. Regardless, Russia remains willing to accept massive losses to maintain offensive operations across multiple fronts. As noted by Kesselman, Russian armed forces continue to advance along the entire front line. This was made possible by massive shelling and so-called meat assaults. Russia's losses are quite high, and this month seems to be one of the largest in terms of losses for Russia. We estimate that the enemy will lose about 40,000 troops, both wounded and killed, during the month, Kesselman said. According to him, the main focus of Russian attacks is centered around the settlements of Zeleno, Kurakov in the Pokrovsk direction of the Donetsk Oblast. Kesselman noted that recent Russian tactics have been to avoid entering populated areas because it requires more sophisticated training. They surround populated areas with long-range weapons fire. Once a populated area is surrounded, they turn it into a pile of rubble. Very cynical and disgusting actions. Kesselman added, Russian units also advanced in the areas of Chasiv Yar, in addition to advances made by Russian forces in the Lyman direction. The Estonian intelligence agency said that there had been no significant changes in the territories occupied by Ukrainian troops in the Kursk Oblast over the past week. The Ukrainian armed forces continue to conduct maneuvers and ambushes against Russian units. Earlier this week, the head of the Estonian Defense Forces Intelligence Center asked to retake territories seized by the Ukrainian armed forces but continue to ask the country's leadership to extend the deadline for the operation's completion. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen visited the central Bosnian village of Donja Jablanica on Thursday, after it was devastated by recent floods and landslides. The disaster in early October claimed 27 lives, and the small village was virtually buried in rocks that descended on the village from a quarry located on a hill above. I am here 20 days after the disaster and it is still heartbreaking to see the devastation, the destruction here in the region, said von der Leyen. Bosnia has sought EU aid and many countries have sent teams to help through the EU's civil protection mechanism. Europe stands with you and we are here not only for the short run but also for the mid and long term, to help you first of all, of course to help immediately, but second to reconstruct and rebuild after the disaster," she added. Hey, photographer. Unfortunately, the other side, when uh, the train from the ferry, uh, at 7 in the morning, going for work, 
Evo sad ću. Samo pa neko lutko, njega i ja ću. Možda samo moram imati prošlika. I am here 20 days after the disaster and it is still heartbreaking to see the devastation, the destruction uh, here in the region. First and foremost, my thoughts are with the victims and the families and friends they left behind. Uh, what a horrible experience. I heard that the disaster started in the middle of the night. People had no chance to uh, flee the destruction. And I wanted to say Europe is by your side. Europe stands with you. And we're here not only for the short run, but also for the mid and long term to help you, first of all, of course, to uh, help immediately, but secondly, to reconstruct and rebuild after the disaster again. <laughs> Thank you.